So far, we've considered how to build a discrete event simulator and also how we might be able to generate random numbers to allow us to simulate arrival processes. Let's take a moment to think about what the outputs of the simulator might be. And to study that, let's go back to our example of a single queue. And so we have a single queue over here and a server, and we have a certain number of jobs. And so we have jobs arriving into the system, waiting in the queue, and then they get served by the server, and then they depart. So uh, one uh, obvious thing we might want to look into is the system utilization. And this is the percentage of time that the system is busy and the rest of the time it's idle. So obviously we'd like to build systems which are used uh, with a reasonable amount of utilization. So we want to measure this. And so we just need to keep track of the status. Is it busy? Is the system busy or idle? And then the ratio of the busy time to the total time is the utilization. The second one would be, for example, the throughput. And the throughput is the number of jobs that are served uh, per second. So this is the number of jobs served per second. I don't know why I have an S here. Okay. Uh, the throughput is the jobs per second. So essentially we count the total number of jobs. And let's say total number of jobs is J jobs and the total simulation time is T. Then on average, J over T jobs are being uh, put through the system. And so that would be the throughput. Now remember that uh, in order to compute this, we need to run the simulation long enough so that this value J is sort of meaningful. We don't have a bunch of jobs stuck inside the queue that haven't come out yet. So typically to compute this, we'll need what's called a warm-up period. And in the warm-up period, we're going to start filling up the queue with arrivals. And then uh, we will compute the simulation uh, throughput uh, metric for the middle part of the simulation and not in the cooldown. So there's going to be the cooldown at the end. And so the number of jobs in the system that are being processed will typically be something like this. If you look at time, the number of jobs. So in the initial, there are no jobs being processed. And then you'll have a certain number of jobs being processed over the, over the period of time. And then as you stop the arrivals, so this is going to be the warm-up period and this is going to be the cool down period and we want to measure the throughput during this intermediate period of time after the arrival period and before the cool down period. In the same, uh, the same period will be used for measuring other things as well such as the mean queuing delay and that's going to be the time that a job is waiting in the queue, mean queuing delay. And similarly, the mean queue length, which is how long the queue is on average. And we'd like to perhaps know how big to have a, how big a buffer should be. So we want to know the mean queue length that gives us an indication of that. And we may want to know the number of drop jobs. These are the jobs that are coming into the system when the system is full. In other words, the buffer is full. So if you have an arrival, and the buffer is completely full, then this arrival is going to get dropped. And so we want to know what the, the percentage of drops, drop jobs are, for example, so drop jobs fraction, and that is something that will allow us to size the system. Now, importantly, we need to remember that each time we run the simulation, we're going to run it with some kind of arrival process, which is stochastic. So the arrival process is stochastic means that we are going to have a different trajectory of arrivals uh, each time we run the simulation. And therefore, what this means is that we need to, first of all, have multiple trajectories. And uh, we're going to then, and to make multiple trajectories, we're going to need to have multiple sets of random numbers, which are of random numbers. Which, which are used for the arrival processes. And so to do this, what often is done is that the random number is going to have a seed. And this number, the random number generator will have a seed. And each time we are going to use the random number generator, we will start with a different seed and using different seed values, 
we can get multiple uh, runs of the simulation. And so to get multiple trajectories, we're going to need multiple runs. And then in each of these runs, we will get one metric. So for example, if you're measuring the mean queuing delay, then we will get over here the first time we run it, we'll get a queuing delay value Q1. The second time we run, we'll get queuing delay value Q2, etc. And if you run it n times, we'll get n different queuing delay values Qn. And then we can think of the mean queuing delay as being the mean of this. So if you think of this as this, it's sigma i qi by n uh, is going to be, uh, which we'll call as q bar, is going to be the mean queuing delay that we're going to be computing uh, by doing multiple runs. So the question becomes, how big should n be? How big should be, how many runs do we need? And to answer that question, we will need to answer the we will need to use some statistics and so for the next little bit we're going to go into a sort of a refresher of statistics to answer this question how many runs of the simulation do we need and indeed how long should each simulation be run so that we have a reasonable answer for the choice uh, for the value of this metric <laughs>